hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly podcast where we figure out what we think about everything. My name's Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. I'm Ivanka Magic. This week we're going to talk, the, the subject is, can old people change? And we're ca- categorising old people as basically anyone over 30, or anyone with kids really, as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Because it seems like that's the sort of age around which people's brains start to stop wanting to change what they think about anything unless they are very active about doing so. And we have a vague theory that maybe it's like, you don't have to tell kids conflicting stuff or something like that. Yeah, you want some rules, stick to the rules, Mm. repeat the rules, and you know, change just requires, it's just, and also you're tired and you don't have time, frankly. So (laughs) so yeah, can can old people change, AKA what, what needs to change in 2022? What have we learned from yeah. 2021? This is our last episode. It's a Christmas episode. There's Santa. Oh, Santa's no, going to get involved. Keen, I'm not keen on the bells. But Santa, ha- um, apparently. Ivanka hates Christmas. Confirmed. <laughs> because she doesn't like sleigh bells for some reason. Even though it's the most Christmassy sound. Um, she does have some Christmas lights, though. Although it has apparently re-angled the camera so that you can't really see them. Um, so <laughs> I have not moved. Unless that was me. Unless I did that. Um... Yeah, we're, we're going to just talk about the difference between, like, the Zoomers are all, like, all the stuff that we've been painstakingly getting our heads around for the last three years, the Zoomers just, it's their basic vocabulary. Capitalism is bad, anti, you know, transphobia, homophobia, um, institutional change, climate change, all of those different things that just seem to be, from what I've seen on the TikToks, sort of part of the Zoomer vernacular. Um, and even the sort of younger millennials, millennials to some extent as well, but like, as you get older it's 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 and there's always exceptions there's always those people there's always you know one black conservative you know like it's it's there's always there's always exceptions that prove the rule but like that i think it feels like there's a general trend that um that uh the, the zoomers do seem to get it in a way that, that they're sort of more aware of of the sort of inclusive progressive um frameworks that we've been trying to get our heads around than than, than we ever have been um, but they're not the ones that need to change. The rest of us need to change. No, they, they don't have the power yet. We have the power. We have more power than they do at the moment. Yes. And we, we're not holding that power respectfully, frankly, because uh, we're just going, oh, thank God, there's not another thing on the to-do list, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Well, uh, well, Zoomers, we're sort of though, we're defining... Sorry, go on. Well, I think we do need to say who a Zoomer is. I've not heard the phrase until you mentioned it. <laughs> just to, iPhone age. Yeah, just kids. to help all us us old people. Uh, come on, oldies, um, catch up. Uh, yeah, they're like anyone that's sort of born in the iPhone era, really. Um, so they're like teenagers. They're young. You know, they're sort of like a bit younger than the millennium. Millennials. Oh, these millennials okay. and their avocado toast and you know all these conservative talking. Really, it's all sort of. So much of this is defined by Fox News's um, horrible talking points that this doesn't really translate to reality a lot of the time. Um, yeah, so we'll cover some of that. Like we're just gonna have a crack at that, really, and um, sort yep, of try and top. This is gonna be our last episode this year because we're. I'm having a break, and Ivanka's having and a break. And therefore I am. So, yeah, no, I'm having Ivanka's a break. Doing whatever she's doing, <laughs> I don't mind. I'm trying to have a lot of December off and uh, get my head leveled out again. Um. So yeah, let's uh, jump into title music. <laughs> Or no, Ivanka Magic. How are you? What's the best thing that happened to you last week? I yesterday mm. when I stopped at lunchtime, went to lunch and went out and was out for three hours sitting around, found a new restaurant on the island. I'm feeling a bit um what's the word? ashamed that I hadn't bothered to stop off at this restaurant at a previous uh, at any previous time in the last two or three years that I've been coming to the island um, it was lovely, it was like in someone's front room, the late old granny had cooked all the food it was just really nice, and we sat there because we've got friends back, the friends that we met in Alaska who have been travelling around Croatia yeah, for a ones. couple of months hmm. they are back in the village before they go, they leave for good on Monday 
and uh, so yeah, we all went out and had a long, long boozy lunch in the middle of a work day. Mm-hmm. And then I came back and I still did work and it was great. Uh, <laughs> so yes, that was it was really nice and I felt like I'd had a little holiday because uh, I, I have worked rather a lot in the last two years, not had enough time off, I'd say. So these little moments of just Appreciating, enjoying the company and going, well, yeah, that was nice. Very nice. Splendid. What about you, Michael? Um, I had my, I've got, a, I've had my third vaccine shot, I had a, had a booster yesterday. So uh, now I've got Pfizer as well as two AstraZeneca's. So nothing can stop me. And we're going um, up to see my family in Nottingham tomorrow. And then we're going off to Italy to see Sharon's family next week. And hopefully there won't be any travel complications with any of that. But I think it's going to be OK. I think like vaccinated, you should be all right. And that is yeah. how it should be. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, um, but yeah, just trying to like polish some stuff off so I can relax, but also just how much do I really need to do? Nothing I do makes any difference anyway, so I might as well just chill. Oh, <laughs> Next year, you? though, I'm going to be so rich. I'm going to buy myself a brand new MacBook Pro somehow. <laughs> this is my big goal. £75 million. Pounds. <laughs> yes. Um, All right, nice. break. That is from one of my videos. <laughs> you nearly caught I'll me yawning. Link it. I did catch you on the end of a yawn. I should have checked. Um, uh, video uh, Yamaha. Right. So I think something that is a theme, something that is a theme uh, that we have realised more and more, hello, Mr. Octopus, um, something that is a, a clear has become very much into focus of late, um, if it wasn't to many people before, is how a lot of change is being put on individuals instead of being made institutionally. Um, The most uh, galling example of this being the whole carbon footprint thing that was created by BP, $250 million campaign to basically put, stop them being responsible for climate change make us individually responsible for it so we live in this society where all of the onus is being put on the individuals instead of on the institutions with all the power um to change but without institutional change i don't see individuals changing they they that well, is too hard I, unless you're i don't I, for <laughs> me i think it's it's a bit it's it's more than that whether or not individuals mm. can change And I think this is where the sort of like what old people need to learn Mm -hmm. is that that individual individual change isn't enough. It doesn't stop me, you know, like me, I'm great. It doesn't stop me wanting to be a good citizen and do lots of things. But as with vaccination, we all know, and it's a brilliant example, I think, like vaccinating yourself isn't actually enough and and doesn't necessarily protect you, you know, you it, we need that yeah. sort of like wearing the, a mask. The herd immunity <laughs> isn't Same. it like, like it's uh, they're only things that so so this cut i think that, and this is probably a human history biology possibly i don't know i'm making shit up now but mm. it's the last episode of the year but it's like you know up until now you could you know you had your farm or your cave or whatever it was you had your space that you could reach and touch and walk to the edge of and get to and if you could control that space if you could chop enough wood for winter you would be warm enough and if you could grow enough food or water it or whatever you would have enough food but the problems that we have cannot be solved on our own. That's just it. Being, It is actually an act of selfish self-preservation or preservation of your own gene pool and your family. To be more inclusive, we yeah. need to evolve. We need to evolve so that in- inclusivity and equity and those good words that mean greater good are part of our... This is, my pre- this is a preachy bit. <laughs> Because um, like otherwise, a church, you're screwed. Your preaching has no 
teeth to it at the end of the day like if you want to preach you've got to have a guy standing behind you with big muscles you know that's going to punch anyone in the face that doesn't obey the preach like you don't really get permission to preach to people unless you have you know at least a stick to beat them with if they don't <laughs> don't apply least- it's just people are just going to tune out tune out and switch off if they don't agree and that's that's this it's sort of nice that now we, we individuals do feel empowered in a way that they were just not at all allowed to you know individuality was a breath of fresh air at a certain point um but yeah it's is uh, people are, need to get more sophisticated in their individualism <laughs> and yeah, realize yeah, that yeah, yeah. as you're saying like to yeah. be selfish sometimes means to put others first yeah 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 to yeah. make it to make it or you know there are things where you know us as a as the richer nations, the privileged nations, vaccinate making sure everyone in the world is is vaccinated, is for us. It's for all of us. It's like, the scariest it's thing. Like, it's what? to stop it mutating like, into a freaking. Yeah. I mean, already Omicron. What's ne- next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, like uh, we're getting, this has got we're halfway six, through the Greek alphabet. What already. is it like? Six random mutations all in one variant. Yeah. It's like this is because yeah. this would not be as easy to happen if people were actually like thinking no. of the greater good and 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 sort of conflating conflating social movements uh geared around inclusivity geared around sort of uh pushing those in power to change what they're doing in order to sort of protect all of us to like sort of adapting that that sort of the, the protest and the marches to this utterly self yeah well i just don't want to have to wear a mask so i'm going to go and protest yeah. that and you're sort of aping something without really any understanding of yeah what, what like how what? sort of offensive and- it is that you've hijacked that form of uh, social movement yeah, yeah, yeah. to yourself it to just be selfish instead of to try and yeah. group together the whole point is we're grouping together to make change to protect people that are traditionally marginalized you not feeling like doing something isn't traditionally marginalized that's just you're just <laughs> being an it's asshole just, like it's just being or a slavoj zizek would put it as a pervert <laughs> who is enjoying the role of a victim <laughs> in your pointless life <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm becoming less and less yeah, sort of uh big hearted towards towards this kind of selfish behavior but and i think the uh, the 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 in the I don't know more interesting thing. There's the, the we've got our COVID example of 2021, and then we've got things like um, the way you know take I know taking a town like Brighton and the way there's a there's a class divide in Brighton. There's an organisation that's working to 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 reduce that. But there's a selfishness about it, you know. We we want we want to rescue children from poor from poor situations, but they don't. We don't want them in class with our child, because that will now then disadvantage our child. There's this kind of like, yes, I want to help. So even those of us who feel that we are progressive and inclusive and all of those kinds of things, we draw the line at our child. Uh, I don't know, sitting in class with people who who come from a much more disadvantaged background than us, or something. We can be quite funny with our with our understanding of how how and what helps mm. and the othering of things, and maybe even we don't realise sometimes that we are mm. doing it. Well, I think so, um, yeah. that the, the, there's something you said, like that um, socialism, social change, like that, like. Um, social safety nets all those things always came from a sort of emergency ultimately selfish reasons it's like this is kind of horrible can we sort this out like henry ford and the whole like well we've got to give workers we've got we can't have them working seven days a week because otherwise they'll have no time to drive around in our cars like that was a whole driver (laughs) for like like the sort of labor movements um and then like the second world war all these different all these different things that meant oh now we've got no choice but to do the right thing and these have always been economic boom times when you've stopped sort of focusing all the power in in the hands of a small number of people and allowed them to like um you know do all those things that they do to retain their power at the expense of everyone else 
and you sort of go, no, we're going to have a social socialism, so <laughs> go away. And and these are the times that humanity does best. But it's it's a hard things have to be bad for people to be able to to be sold on it because they do have such a narrow you have such a narrow field of awareness that you don't realize that okay it's, it's going to be a couple of steps removed the benefits you're going to see and it's going to be maybe a little bit longer term that you're going to see the benefits but they're going to be much greater than they would be if you just sort of kept grabbing on and i think about you know rushkoff and his billionaires that want to put like shock collars on their on their security guards um have they you know the answer is well, this just goes to show you the limits of the selfish Don't. way you're going through yeah. life and you need to figure out how to like broaden yeah. out, give, be inclusive, sacrifice. Yeah. And it, it, anyway, it's the same thing. I think if if, if you um, didn't have the mega rich creating their own silos and then wanting to fly separately and do things separately, if everyone had more wealth then everything would be nicer for everyone and you wouldn't have to hide yeah. away in some alternative reality. Sure. <sighs> Unbelievable. I mean, it's like, a, I just can't, it's like hoardy. You know, the idea of being that hoardy is, um, is, is totally beyond me. But yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's something as well about the fact that we, um, you know, going back to what you were saying about that, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about the Henry Ford thing and the cars driving at the weekend. Like the, the, there's a, the, the, I read something in the week by the guy that started Riverford Organics. Mm. And he, you know, he's like a big hippie, really. Mm. Uh, give away his company, all of the good things. He ticks all the things. And he was like, you know, everyone needs to stop planting trees. <laughs> That's not the answer. You know, we're kind of distracting ourselves with tree planting mm. when the only solution is going to be taxation. It's like, we have to pay the taxes on the things that are bad. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, but also, make maybe it. maybe don't subsidise the fossil fuel industry anymore. Maybe don't literally yeah. give them extra money for ruining the planet. Maybe don't. Maybe stop giving rich, like stop giving investors half their money back for a million dollar, a thousand pound investment in the UK. Put fifty grand in. The government shells out the other fifty grand from our taxpayer money. Maybe don't do that. Like no. all this stuff that the, that the powerful people have been lobbying for, like maybe just like, it's, it's one thing not to do the negative stuff, but also to give Amazon like money to come and ruin our sort of work landscape in the UK. It just happens over and over again. We're actually paying people to screw us over left, right and center. And it's, yeah, like that bad. would be step one, and then step two would be yeah, tax. <laughs> maybe, maybe you make it harder. <laughs> uh, break. Should we have a break? Yeah, let's have yeah. a break. Synthesizers, live synth jams, the most interesting kind of music to listen to. Um, but can how do you how do you get old people to change then? Or do you just wait for them to die? Well, it, but there's a certain that's how to deal with the proportion <laughs> because they're close enough to that age that we won't have too long to wait. There's just not time. There really isn't. That's yeah, what's annoying. There isn't time. Well, we have, I've like watched eight this, years uh, now. Like <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> Wait, it's like there's just not time to wait for the for those the the sort of like you know the the miserable I don't want to change gang or the and I don't think it's always about so my grandfather lived till he was eighty nine mm -hmm. and he my English grandfather I'm talking about and he was a member of the British Communist Party f from just before the Second World War he's one of that generation mm -hmm. you know the the the, the would be spies type people. <laughs> And he, you know, he was a member of the British Communist Party. My granny was a Labour councillor and he was like, you know, he was like far too left for, for, for that kind of shenanigans. And um, when the Soviet Union collapsed, he went into a deep depression. There's no other 
Mm. words for it this thing that he'd believed in he'd he'd indoctrinated me with all these stories of grandfather News lenin flash. i'd read confirmed I'd, for communist yeah i read <laughs> he used to buy me all these story books that were soviet produ- production and uh, you know he, I, I was we were we was he was chairman of the british soviet friendship site like blah 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 and then this thing just didn't work it collapsed and mm. it took him some years to recover from that but he recovered, and I think that's the that shows a degree of resilience that mm. as well. And I think I, I appreciate that for many people of an older generation. I watched this video this morning that Led by Donkeys have made, describing um, a, a situation in Portsmouth mm. where the Conservative MP and the Labour MP and all the people are protesting against. A, a, a power cable being fitted but the Tory party is ploughing ahead because ex-Russian donor has given them you know one and a half million quid and so they're pushing it through um, and it's like this realisation for people that the government is wrong and is corrupt people who have believed in it for such a long time people who have trusted the conservative government they'll look after us you know mm. go you know tug your forelock or whatever it's called yeah. but it doesn't matter because you know the 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 gaffer will look after us and that they, they won't they and and coming to terms with the fact that britain has a corrupt government yeah. and a the- corrupt is really hard and i can understand why you would want to deny that yeah, and that really trickle can. down trickle down economics is not real after no. all. It never you, have it was buy, never real. And uh, you buy into these things your whole life. You believe that they are, you know, they might not be the rightest thing, but you know, poor yeah, choice of words. It's a sunk cost but fallacy, you know. It's <laughs> it's it's really hard, but we haven't got time to wait for us all, you know, three or four years for us all to come out of the depression. We've got to just crack on that the world is changing the the climate is changing the pandemic is just one example of of frank you know it's all related to the same thing like let's just get on with the the, the next stage yeah we yeah haven't got, you know, there's, there's, this like, abs- there's this absolutely infuriating um and this maybe is I, I don't know how you change this but it feels like the biggest thing that has to change there's this infuriating fix like Italy, when I was there in the summer, they were arguing over plastic straws and whether they should be... It's like... Yeah. If you can't even... If you can't even ban plastic straws, which even Gove managed, like, even he did that, like, of what hope is there for the real seismic change that is required to actually solve the problems we're trying to solve? So everyone sort of, like fusses around like on this kind of like superficial change instead of but maybe maybe accepting that superficial change would actually make people more willing to um yeah or maybe the superficial change like if we could just get faster at them you know it's like croatia's like banned plastic bags i think a year ago Mm. still not being brought into into um into action and you know croatia is the fifth worst in europe for the way they deal with their rubbish right um you know what i mean like they're just they're just slow and there's this like what my dad used to refer to it is like you know throwing the rubbish in the river because the river would take it away it's not Mm. going to be in front of my house and there is this constant it's the same with local politics this conversation i had with my sister the other yesterday we were talking about these um she's currently protesting against some a change that's going to be made to some schools in brighton and as a i described her yesterday i was like you've got to come to terms with the fact that you are an advocate for underprivileged children that is your role and you need to embrace it and stop being apologetic for it go for it Mm. because that's what she does and she's like but all of these things everyone is always pro solving today's problem like this school solution that's proposed it's proposed they know that making a change to her local school will just kick the can of shame to quote another friend of mine down the road to the next election or the next year or the rubbish that gets washed down the river it's like we have run out of river and road and everything it it, it is now this is now this is when we've got to do all this stuff see the entire ecosystem we see the whole organism like i just i was hearing about the um the american 
Indian, the, the Native Americans being relocated when that's you know they they came and their land was taken because oil was discovered on it, and they're relocated to these other regions where none of their like practices work anymore because the climate's no. completely different. Meanwhile, you know they were they were kind of husband doing the things with the trees to make sure that you know you don't have a forest fire every like yeah, five yeah. years, and that wasn't being done anymore. And 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 you you. you it's this it's colonialism to some extent it's like you can get away with kicking things and throwing stuff in the river for as long as there are more lands to colonize and more people to dominate and murder to sort of shift them out but we we're we can't do that anymore as you know rushkoff says like there's the the, the sort of spatial colonization can, can, there's nowhere to go uh, maybe no. outwards with elon or whatever but um and so and they're just that that sort of yeah, that attitude it has always been a human attitude. It has always been something that yeah, we've been more yeah. or less able to get away with. Yeah. Just don't go but down g- that end of the river. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But you can't, we can't. We, that's it. There's too many of us. We've already we've thrown too much rubbish in the river. Hmm. We've waited too for too many next elections. Oh, don't worry about the budget. They'll sort it out. As long as we get, you know, we'll, pu- we'll push this through now. And then that will make that budget look good. And then, yeah, we'll deal with the fact that we've kicked a social care system down to next year or the year after. And it's like, you know, it, it's, it's just the, 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 that's it. You know, we can't keep doing that. And it's like there, there is a buck and it has stopped. <laughs> it's stopped here. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, and I, you know, I, I, I find it, I, I, I think it's so many of the problems that I end up talking about. IT systems, mm. you know, so all of them, it's always like solving this moment's problem. Mm. And I, I understand that we have to do that, but, but, because you cannot, so, you know, like a, a project and all your decision making get too complicated. But, you know, there is, it has, it, it, you can't just make decisions off of one data point <laughs> from one area. You've got to bring them all in. That's, that, that's and, it. And while there is, some, there is something to be said for like, okay, this is too complicated. One step at a time. I'm going to solve the, the problem that's in front of me and then I'll get to the next one. Um but if you insist on like dragging each tiny little step out and politicizing it and turning it into a freaking discussion on television and and yeah. wasting time over that tiny step on the thing that you can see in front of you now then abs- you know what hope what hope but yeah um, it's the things like this you know if you if you take the solving of the plastic straws as a test you know for how quickly to make environmental new environmental laws or how to make a change to something and you take that as a like with my solar panels on my roof here right? yeah. i still don't have working solar panels mm. the solar panels are on the roof the you know stuff is done but i still don't have all of the change and it's because it's without doubt because i'm the first person to do it mm. in on the island and in the area um but and so everything that i'm that they're trying to do is the first time and so, and that take the, the there are no processes in place. The people aren't who need to sign the pieces of paper aren't in the right. They don't know about the bits of paper. They don't know what everything. But so, I think it's okay to simplify a problem if it has some sort of bigger pro- like there's a there's there's a there's a you're you're considering more things in the system. If you see what I'm, I'm not yeah, sometimes expressing making, myself, you know, well, like but... it's like when you join a new software project. There's you, you, you've got to figure out how the build environment all works. So you pick a very very simple little bug in order to be able to right. I just want to change yeah, exactly. that text there. So, but that means yeah, yeah, there's yeah. all this background work you've got to do to kind of install this yeah. and that and the other on your system and figure out how to what, what to edit and how to save it. That's and make what it automatically. Come out. Yeah. yeah. So so maybe some of these a small changes. Um, what's the word? Um, um, deceptively small looking, but but it's actually like um, it's it's helping get the uh, process in place. Hello, child. We have been interrupted. Let me. I'll put a break in, and you can. Uh, yeah, I'll just put a break in.
was so embarrassed about it. <laughs> it's funny. I think it's funny. Well, it's a music it. video. I just showed some of my music video that I did. It was the first one I did in when I moved to Berlin with a green screen and just for face. Um, look, 2021 was the year that I literally gave up on the ability of grown people to change. <laughs> well, oh. Certainly from a commercial perspective i'd created this app called changes which is all about <laughs> tracking your happiness try changing something see if it positively or negatively affects your happiness and the more i thought about it, the more i learned the more i talked the more i looked at it i was like people no no one wants to do this no one wants to change like it's it's the hardest and most terrifying thing in the whole world for someone to change something and it needs to come out of a crisis it needs to come when you've got no other choice <laughs> than to try something different or the world has to change and you've got no choice and so i kind of gave up but that's not the answer is it no i think what you i think you know what you were talking about earlier about the sort of or the the, the sort of branding of things and the and the the how people uh how we can be marketed at with our carbon footprints and all of these things. Like, I think we, you know, we, we, we know that people don't like change, they're afraid of it, but all change is, is learning. That, that's all it is. Well, but it's, it's behavior. It's beha you learn and that, but your behavior has to change because there's no good learning something without changing your behavior. No, but you can create a new behavior, so you don't have yeah. to change your behavior. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like you know, we need to rebrand change. I think that's the that's the project for twenty twenty two. It's okay. like you know, all it is is learning and creativity. That's it. Well, you want to do this? I mean, I do have to resist this a little bit because we learned about climate change fifty years ago, didn't we? Like in the seventies. We've we learnt about it a long time ago, but in terms of actually changing behaviours, it's been like the I ones that it. have been institutionally facilitated, recycling, uh, plastic straws, etc. Those ones have changed, but in terms of fossil fuel companies, they'll do anything not to change, not to change that that bottom line, and and not to change their behaviour, even though they know full well what their behaviour is doing. So not to you know. So, but that's what I, uh, I don't know. I think that the, the, but they, they have gone to the opposite. They are trying to keep everything the same, but it's not, I'm thinking, I'm not thinking about f fossil fuel companies mm. when I talk about learning, I'm thinking about, you know, but the, the, whatever the equivalent these days is of my grandfather watching the Soviet Union mm. collapse and sort of having to learn a whole new way of thinking about something in order to live, frankly. You know, it was, I think he would, you know, it's that sort of like, you know, people, I'm not sure that every person in their, um, 70s 80s 60s maybe and i'm, I'm not that far i don't know how old I, like do they fully appreciate what it means what climate change means do they think that it's going to be like well you know that'll happen to some generation down the road i don't i don't know i don't think they have learned that we well, have learned i don't think we we've been we've been told us we've been told about climate change but i don't think we've learned about we're, people are running out the clock like let's face it like all these people are yeah. running out the clock um have they i i mean i think the ones that are doing the most damage learn soonest but yeah that's 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 what it seems like to me uh, and i i do again like the change is difficult because you have to figure out how the new normal figure out okay yeah. i've got to remember i've got to form a new habit to keep a mask in my pocket and then I've got yeah. a new habit to put it on. Remember to put my contacts in if I'm going to do a big shot because I don't want steamy glasses. Like all those little things like um, that are just a pain and they are anxiety inducing because they're unfamiliar and people are afraid of them. And um, so and, and there's definitely I think there's a lot of, you know, think about it in terms of drinking or something like that. Or smoking like oh, I'm never going to drink again. I know smoking is bad for my health. Yet every morning at eleven o'clock, without fail, there that habit is so deeply ingrained that I'm having that cigarette. Like it takes, it takes 
it takes a lot. It does to, take a lot to 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 do things differently, which is why I find the mask thing so annoying. Because now for me, it's like more mental overhead to not put the mask on because I've got the habit of walking in the shop now, and like I just oh, it's just like it's on without me thinking about it. Whereas if I was going to be like, oh, actually, should I use it? Shall I not use it? It's like that's like a load of mental overhead that yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think about what I want for lunch. Why why do I have to think about that? It's true, it's true. But but that's but what we want then is good good rules <laughs> we want to be able to trust the rules yeah and that's what Both we mean by well. institutional yeah. change right at the end yeah of the yeah day. yeah i just want to know what i'm supposed to do like you were i know we've handed off that we've had conversations before about like you know you're the expert you tell me what to do you're the government you're in charge you do the right thing by all of us but i think that um there is a there is a degree of creativity and imagination required at the moment mm. to work out how to live in this new how to enjoy life yeah. how to have you know like we've been taught that we need to buy stuff for our kids that we need to um get stuff for them that we need to build up our own little hoard of house and money that we can leave for our children yeah. and all these kind of things that are actually potentially utterly meaningless mm -hmm. in a new in the in this sort of new situation and we've got to but we don't necessarily yet know nobody's told us right instead of doing that for the environment you need to start doing this other thing we haven't come up with that and we, and we need is, that and this is one of the major ironies of the last like few decades is we we have been more aware of chi climate change but we've ever, there's been a lot of trying to solve it without change just through buying yeah stuff. yeah just buying yeah, a slightly yeah, yeah. different thing it's still the same behavior i'm still consuming yeah <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, the thing yeah. that is that's the plan right just keep them consuming okay they consume something with green stuff on its packaging um yeah, but yeah, it's still yeah. not a significant enough behavior change is it to actually no. make any no, difference no 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 it isn't no um no but just maybe we can like when when you say um learn Maybe yeah. can we can can you sort of unpack what you mean what you were talking about there because obviously I talked about behaviour. But... Well, I, I was th I I think that in order to so one of the things we've done over the last three years with this podcast is learn, mm. and we've practiced our learning in terms of like uh, saying things out loud and practicing saying things differently mm. and questioning ourselves and being wrong and having to read something or taking the time out to think about something differently i think i've cemented because mm. there is a different about there is this there is a difference between finding something out and learning it but like you have to mull it over in your brain before you can internalize it and it has a hope of becoming a habit mm. and i'm not i i understand things like shopping and cigarettes and alcohol they all have a they have a particular quality in our life or like there's, there's an addictive quality but just generally going being open to and not being afraid of questioning like these conversation i had recently about the potato head family is no longer mr potato head mm. they've dropped the mr from the brand and it's potato head and it's and they're like and i, it's, I it was brought up to me over a meal it's like have you heard it's outrageous <laughs> you know gender blah and so and i was like so I actually Googled it and there was a New York Times article that sort of went, mm, hang on, it sort of like, it worded it in a Mr. Potato Head uh, word, but it was like, hold your horses, everybody. You, we're just dropping the Mr. You can be whatever kind. And they were <laughs> introducing a smaller potato head. So it could be a whole family of potato heads. Anyway, so it's not a, we are not throwing away. We are just inviting more people in or defining normal a bit more broadly. And... Um, you know, it's that sort of, maybe the words, maybe it sounds weird the first time you say potato head instead of Mr. Potato Head. Maybe saying, oh, you know, making a pie out of lentils feels a bit weird the first time you do it because you normally make it out of mincemeat. Yeah. But it's just a pie. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's going to be so got, mundane it's, so soon. It's a, you've just got to practice it and make it so you don't feel itchy about it, so you don't feel uncomfortable. So that you can and then because uh, the more we approach these things, I think, with a sort of open mind of, um, you know, OK, I'm doing I'm, I'm, I'm inventing new ways to live in this changing world, the more easy they are to try out because 
you're not approaching them as though you're being attacked. Yeah, and like, your identity is less it? tangled up. Psychologically, in it. Like, you have to put a positive spin on these things. Otherwise, it's an it's awful. <laughs> the, there, there's definitely a, there's definitely um there's sort of like unpleasant truths are hard. I'm I'm thinking about yeah. as a teenager, like I was raised, you know, Catholic, Christian, all these things, and my biology teacher. Start, we, we learned about DNA and he said look, I mean some people think I mean it's a crazy idea some people have this idea like t- think of it what you will that we are basically just sort of meat robots being created by to, to reproduce this DNA this genetic code just through generations and generations there's not really much more to it than that um, yeah. and you hear a fact like that and you go well, I don't like the sound of that. That doesn't make me seem uh, that's that goes Special. against my anthrop- anthropocentric ideas and ideas of going to heaven and being some sort of uh, disembodied soul when I die and X, Y, Z and the other. Um, and so you go. Eh. And then that you've learned that fact. And now as you go through the world, you go, hmm, not really seeing anything that refutes this idea. <laughs> and a lot of the other stuff seems increasingly sketchy the more, the more i think about it and so uh, it could just be time like live with these ideas for longer the, the, the more these people that want to go on marches about these things hopefully they hear this the new information and th- it's hard to like shift the truth from your brain if without it's a lot of work at a certain point to protect your identity or your like your, your habit, habits from change when like you're just not seeing anything that really supports your false beliefs anymore and you're only really seeing stuff that supports supports this this new perspective that's been discovered so um but you know is there time to wait for everybody to go through that pro- process then mm. i mean that that people need time like you can't force people to to just turn on a dime as they say in the americas no um, well you can it, you, it is possible <laughs> but well you, need, you have you know, to but you need <laughs> you need governments to actually like not water things down and be yeah, yeah. be a bit more that's their job I, it's I've, like pay, it, it goes back to this whole thing like i voted for you because i want you to look after me and by looking after me, I'm, I mean, I want you to look after the society I live in. And, you know, it's my the role. And I, it's a hard, I, I do this analogy all the time of government equals parent. But, you know, somebody is responsible. Somebody has to be responsible for making the responsible decisions. It's like, you know, the, the conversation I have with my child all the time. It's like, if you were a nice mummy, you'd let me. Or I let her have some chocolate. And she goes, oh, you're the best mummy. Like, no, that's not what makes me the best mummy. <laughs> that's my, what makes makes me the best mummy is that I make you brush your teeth not that I let you have chocolate but it's like a kind of yeah you, you you know you do somebody some the people who have the power to take responsibility for society need to be responsible I think um, I have I have a thought that you know I hope maybe it's something we can um, ponder going into the new year the um the strength, like I, I am, um, you know, I dug into my that next door thing, that voting thing, that 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 thing mm-hmm. recently, where where I, I sort of took some time out to investigate. They were doing this um, um, referendum to see if we were going to do some nonsense. And um, when I was on the outside, I was like, "This is such a waste of everyone's time. What are they even doing?" And then you go in and you learn, oh, there's it's actually this government process that's required in order to be able to unlock this thing. And there's this whole chain of things that has to happen. And you just know if you're inside it, you're so buried in all of that bureaucracy and all of those processes and bureaucracy and that the the, the sort of the the, the sort of like, yeah, that that, that really it's really difficult to make these changes. And what I'm going to say is that is. A feature that is sort of the strength as well as the weakness of our institutions if they weren't quite difficult to quickly just switch around we America would have fascism like Trump would have would have like just got away with an awful lot more if there weren't resistant old institutions that don't want to change and they make you put a lot of work into making those changes 
So to some extent, it's by design and, and we're sort of expecting things to change quicker. We're going against the grain of what actually makes these institutions work. And in the same way, and maybe that, that's the same for individuals. Maybe we, the reason that we have to, we find it difficult, it takes a lot of energy to change is, is, is part of our strength. <laughs> because otherwise we'd be, you know, you drop acid and like everything is everything and you don't know what's, <laughs> you know, like what is real, what isn't real. It's very hard to live like that. Um, so our, our kind of being set in our ways is a huge, is a sort of baseline, a, a foundation on which we build everything on which we teach our children on which we do all these things so it's understandable that people are resistant to to changing that rapidly but that's the problem like we're in these times where everything is changing so much quickly quicker than it ever has before the singularity yeah. is nigh that um we just have to learn how to do it and have to learn how to be smart about it and have to be learn how to like you know control our emotions around this and stop going to these denial spirals and protesting about vaccines yeah I, th I think there's a there's a there's a don't be afraid type of you know thing to 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 embrace i mean i just think of it as like you know what's wrong with the habit being to be adaptable and to mm. be willing to like you know instead of instead of praising people who stick to their gun like there is a balance in all of this like mm. sticking to your guns would mean I was I was talking to somebody who is a privileged white man uh, who I don't think has ever realized that he's a privileged younger than me anyway and I was like you know the what you're t the way you're you're you are not seeing how you are seen and therefore you are not seeing how other people are seen you know, it's mm. that sort of, um, you know, I I could not exist in a society of even my my grandmother's um, uh, generation where we we are the 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 freedoms that we have have to change and we have to be okay okay with them. I'm I am rambling because I was trying <laughs> to think about a nice way of of saying that, you know instead of always praising commitment and seeing things mm. through and not changing and having principle, I have a principle one of my, and I'm very principled about it is that I like to learn new things. Mm. <laughs> it's like I am principled in that way that I will accept that I can be wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, why should my principle be that, you know, that the, the, the is something that is affected, that affects yeah. other people? I think that's what I'm trying, what I mean by this, like, learning is more easier, more positive to uh, uh, embrace than change. That's, I think that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. It's like, and, being wrong is okay. Yeah. And maybe it comes back to this thing that we've said before of, um, you know, like maybe we shouldn't elect someone who has demonstrated repeatedly that he has no values uh, sort of sitting above uh, yeah, his behaviour. Yeah. There is no, he's not like going up to some higher sort of set of principles, Johnson. He is just yeah. kind of doing whatever political manoeuvre has to be done in order for, to benefit himself. And um, maybe we need to like stop, that would be a good thing to stop doing, electing people into power that are behaving like that and start looking at people's values a bit more and a bit lesser, like their sort of, um, their, you know, their reactions. And, yeah. and I think this is what I thought Corbyn was. This is, I mean, I still think it is. And it was actually like to his detriment in the end, uh, especially with the BBC being very anti-Corbyn and, and all that kind of thing. The fact that his he was values over everything, uh, it, people didn't want that either. But like, there's got to be something in between Corbyn and, and, and Johnson yeah, 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 yeah. available. Like, can we not have someone that, you know, can change, like can accept you know new ideas um but not actually like in and uh, incorporate them into their values rather than just like either rejecting something because it doesn't seem to fit into your worldview or it's not politically beneficial to do so but um that would be nice if people but if it's basically if the old people could catch up to the young people then things yeah. it would we, we'd be able to make a lot more progress um let's should we steal a conclusion from chat First time chat from viewer Vizovsky. Can old people change? His answer for us is uh, my mouse is upside down. That's what's happening. Oh, I can't find it. Um, can old people change? Hmm. Some people, yes, and some, no. <laughs>
what it all comes down to is greed. What it all comes well, down to is just human greed. It's the most useless pub comment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess, but that doesn't really... <laughs> right, look. If you like this podcast, episode 190 of which it is... Um, wow. Why don't you just send us an email? Hello at yeah. podcast.com. Do it. Say happy Christmas. Say what you That'd like nice. about it. Or happy new year. Don't really care what you don't like about it, because... I'm very thin skinned. <laughs> but note that if you prob if you did email us with something you didn't like about it, that would probably instantly feed into the uh, <laughs> into the machine. <laughs> um we've got a Patreon, blah blah blah, video episodes early, Fridays. But yeah, we're back in the where can people find you on the internet? People can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. Look it says underneath our Twitter. Yes. Um uh, yeah, we've got the um, yeah. We're back in the new year. I'm gonna have a break. Um, try not to. Yeah, I'm just gonna try and enjoy some Italy. And some, nice uh, one. Non Christmas Christmas time. I think it's gonna be nice to go out in Italy to see because Italy as a as a nation loves a bit of the old uh, Christianity. The Buon <laughs> Natale. Celebrating Christmas. So we'll get. Uh, hopefully, we'll see some spectacular stuff. But as Good. for where I'm staying, it is not a Christmas celebrating family. So I'm sort of that's gonna. I'm, I think I'm gonna enjoy that too, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've got to buy some freaking presents and wrap them up. It's the only time I go shopping is for Christmas presents, and I hate shopping. Buying tat, packaging, wrapping it up. I, I might tell everybody because my sister and my daughter doesn't listen to podcasts. I found a second-hand electric piano. Very oh, excited. Mm. Yeah. You mean electronic, <laughs> like a electronic? Mm. It plugs into the power socket, so it has a volume control, which so we thought was socket. important. No, but I'll buy an amp. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, headphone. Yeah, there, so there it is. Hidden. Look, we That's wish it. you a um, we wish you a season's greetings. Here is Santa. Yes. Oh, An enjoyable... the pain on my ears. Santa's coming. Oh. Um, we hope Santa brings see you, you everything you. you want, and we'll see you in 2022, the year of the. I don't know what. Change. <laughs> year the year of, of fresh good. Fresh hell, no doubt. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does the year 2022 of have in store? The fourth booster. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, yes, and I, I seem to have got away with this Pfizer. So all this, oh, I can oh. sleep on this sore. I've got a sore arm, but it's fine. I was able to sleep on it, so I don't know what the fuss is about. Really, it took twenty minutes out of my day, and now I'm protecting all of those around me. Thank Merry you, Christmas! Michael. See you next time. Merry year. Christmas! Bye 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 bye. bye, 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 bye. bye, bye.